we have this new paper, Buffer of Thoughts. Um, we have seen many methods like chain of thoughts, right? Uh, graph of thoughts, tree of thoughts, and all these kind of prompting methods to enable reasoning in these models. Um, and there are kind of advanced methods, I would say, in terms of prompting and in terms of on how we do inferencing with these models. But I think I still like the idea that we are still trying to innovate around these prompting methods to make these models do more sophisticated tasks. And in this case, the focus is on a few of these reasoning intensive tasks, and they claim that they can achieve SOTA results on 10 challenging reasoning intensive tasks using this buffer of thoughts approach. It's a very simple approach, um, and it's along the same lines, as I said, of these kind of chain of thought and tree of thought prompting methods. So the chain of thought is what we refer to as single query reasoning, right? And then the graph of thought and tree of thought is what we refer to as multi-query reasoning, right? So we have this kind of multiple paths or reasoning paths um, that can allow us to kind of break the problem down. If it's a complex problem, maybe solving a game or something like that, or a math problem. Um, and through that kind of decomposition, we can sort of leverage different algorithms um, at our disposal, like tree algorithms and so forth, to get better results from the system, get more reliable results. And something they show here clearly in their figure uh, with at least a single query approaches, right? You don't get as much accuracy as you may want. And this is the issue of just using a prompting method, you know, out of the box. There's a lot of work that will need to be done to make sure that you can get good results and you can get better results if you use a multi-query approach, but then you also lose efficiency because there's more little steps that this model will be doing, right? There's a lot of these reasoning paths that it will need to generate to come up with a solution. So I don't think this is feasible, something like this, like tree of thought. In, and I've said this in my courses, it's not a feasible approach, um, but I think it has a lot of the things that we can learn from it and things that we can borrow, ideas we can borrow you know, to develop uh, better methods. And what they're proposing here, the buffer of thoughts is more accurate and more efficient. And what they're doing is they have this kind of meta buffer, right? That has like thought templates that they're uh, storing. And these thought templates can be leveraged, right? And they provide like high level thoughts for solving a problem. So once we can enable those high level thoughts or these templates, then we can instantiate those templates, right? And this model will solve the problem based on those templates. And you know it has this knowledge essentially that it can leverage, right? As opposed to just doing in, in a single, you know, in a single shot. And so I like this idea. I mean, it's using this kind of external component, right? That's storing experiences and storing knowledge about everything that we know about chain of thought and all these thought templates and other things that may come up with these problems as well. Because in this case, right, where we have this reasoning and we have already kind of um, instantiated this template and we have all the kind of information that we need to solve the task. And then once we have the output, then all that information comes right back to the meta buffer and we kind of keep expanding and improving that meta buffer so it can be leveraged you know, to solve more problems, right? So all those, those processes to solve tasks is basically you're not throwing that away. That's knowledge that you can continue to leverage, right? And that is what this thought distillation and update process is about. And so, you know, you get something that's more reliable, it's accurate, and it's also more efficient, right? Because you're not really doing this kind of um, like processes and you're doing it in one shot, but you're leveraging this external component. So that's really great. And I've seen a lot of papers like this. I mean, I keep track of all these prompting techniques and these advanced methods for prompting models. And I think it's along the same lines of recent work that I've seen um, that in try to improve chain of thought. And so this is not a new... I think idea, but I like their approach. I think it makes sense to me to be able to have this kind of meta buffer that you can leverage.